Hi, welcome back to another Shower Doctor live stream. Um, today we're going to talk about how an electric shower works. Uh, so we'll go through the water and the electricity. If you like this kind of thing that, that we're doing, you can subscribe to our channel and you can even share it with friends. So what we'll do is we'll discuss the way this works, the way an electric shower works. They're all pretty much the same. Some are much more complicated than others, but we'll just run through the way the whole thing Kind of the, the way the water processes through the unit and also the way that the electricity works. Electric shower really needs about one bar pressure. That's the minimum your water authority is supposed to supply you with. If you've not got that kind of pressure, there is one other way around it. There's some electric showers actually have a small pump inside so you can connect it to the tank in the attic. You cannot connect that to, to the water mains. So the water comes in and meets the solenoid valve. When you switch the shower on, the solenoid activates and allows the water into the shower. So the water then passes through the solenoid and then usually into the, um, the flow control valve or the stabiliser valve. Immediately above the flow valve or the stabiliser valve, um, it's connected to a pressure switch so that the, the shower will then know that there's actually water pressure um, coming into the shower and will switch the electricity on and allow the thing to heat up. As the water passes through the flow valve, it then comes into the bottom of the heating tank. This is the kind of thing that's inside, it's a, a, like an old-fashioned kettle element. So that's the, that is the heating element that's inside some of the showers. They're all different, but you know, once again, as I said earlier, more or less the same. The water passes over the heating element and right at the very top of the tank, there's the outlet pipe. And the water, as it, as it heats up and rises, it comes in and down the pipe and out through the outlet. What I'll do is I'll leave the electricity for a moment and answer one or two of the questions that have come in um, over the last, I think, about the last month or so. There's a few that have not been properly answered. Um, Simon Breeze, um, let me see. Uh, Thanks for the clear video, most helpful, and the shower is now working beautifully, except the shower is dripping. What do I need to do to stop the drip? Well, I checked this up. Uh, Simon, and it looks like you were looking at a Myra 8 or 88 service, one of the, vi the videos that we have showing you how to service it. Um, if it's still dripping, really two or three things, the smallest washers that go, the smallest o-rings that go in the end of the, the shower valve, um, that if they get nicked or are not in perfectly straight, then that's what can cause it to, to drip. So you've got to make sure, have a really strip it out, have a really good close at these the smallest uh, O-rings, which are on the end of the pistons. That that may be the problem. These eight and eighty-eight valves are are really old now. And the other thing to look at is if the O-rings are okay, have a really good close inspection of the brass, because the brass actually inside the valve can start to. Uh, well, to de zincify the zinc comes out of the brass and the brass becomes a bit rough. Um, we've got Kiki1. Uh, hi, whenever I replace the outlet pipe um, on a T80 Easy Fit shower, uh, it always leaks. Uh, it always leaks. After, despite putting the O-ring back in, could you please tell me what I'm doing wrong? <laughs> I'm a plumber. Well, I'll tell you, it's, it, it can be difficult. It just happens that I've got an outlet pipe here. It doesn't matter because they're all much the same. Um, I've got to admit that's happened to me before. You keep pushing the outlet pipe back in and, and there's often a drip. The things that are likely to happen is the old o-ring is still in there and when you push it back in the, the o-ring is, is twisting and it's not sitting exactly in place. The things that I've found in the past um, that make, you know, that sort of, to make this easier is there's not no good answer, but in some cases it's useful to put the O-ring on the spigot and then push the thing in. And in other cases it's sometimes better to put actually the O-ring into the bottom of the shower, make sure it's sitting properly, and then push the outlet pipe back in. There's, there should be no other reason for it leaking there, but it's really just a case of making sure that it was an absolutely square. I'll read some of these other questions for the moment and go back to the shower. So we need to talk about the electricity and how the electricity works as it comes through an electric shower. So the power comes in here into the into the connector block and the first thing that happens is it goes in from the connector block into the, the TCO, the thermal cutout. We've got a spare one here, this kind of thing here. Um, and we also have a separate video on the TCOs, how to check them and how to make it work. But assuming everything's okay, the power comes in one side of the thermal cutout and out the other. 
then down to the switches. And when you turn the shower on, um, what happens is that the solenoid opens up, it sends power to the solenoid, the solenoid opens up and water starts to run through the solenoid. Almost immediately this affects the pressure switch. And the pressure switch, if there's, um, if there's enough pressure, will activate the, um, the, 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 the switch and allow the power to get past these switches. If there's not enough pressure, then what will happen is the, uh, is the, the power won't get through to the heating the tank. If there's enough pressure, then the uh, power comes through to the switches. The switches will then turn on and allow the power then through to the elements. And as I showed you before, elements are kind of like this inside the shower. Tom said, what are the, the symptoms of a bad floor stabiliser valve? Well, probably uneven temperature, so the shower will click on and off and on and off. It's um, The first thing to look for if the shower's going hot and cold is to make sure that you actually have the valve to the shower open properly and the valve coming into your house open properly, so it's getting the full pressure. Um, and if they're open properly and the shower still, the temperature still varying, then it's a good, there's a fair to middle chance that you've got a faulty stab valve, stabilizer valve. You've got a faulty stabilizer valve that's causing the problem. That would be the first place to look. But first of all, check you're actually getting a decent amount of, um, uh, if you're getting a decent amount of pressure to the shower. Red Zebra. Uh, hi, I'm on my third Triton T80. Uh, it's a 10.5 kilowatt shower. Uh, it's been in six months and has gone. Uh, uh, wait a minute, it's a ten point five. It's been in six months and gone the way of the second with a thermal cutout sensor breaking, and the shower going cold from then on. Why? Um, is there a design fault with the shower or a fitting error? It, uh, it wasn't suffering particularly from low pressure, um, and I didn't cover the shower head with my hand to cause back pressure. Any suggestions? If the Thermal cutout is cutting out, it tends to mean that the shower has been overheating because the thermal cutout will work, I, I, I mentioned this in the thermal cutout video, that the thermal cutout will work um, once or twice, uh, sorry, once or twice, it will work quite a number of times but it will eventually break down if it comes, if it's getting used too often. So my thought is, is that there must be, the, the shower must be overheating, the thermal cutout is cutting in and then the shower comes back to working properly again and this is happening on and off all the time and what you're effectively doing is wearing the thermal cutter out. That would be my first thought and, um, and that would be a pressure problem that would cause that because a 10 point, uh, 10 point, yeah, you've got 10.5 shower, that needs the full pressure. There's no way you can get away with any less so same as before, check that the valve coming into the house is open, check that the, uh, the valve in the line to the shower is fully open. Thank you for these questions. Um, I hope you'll have found this valuable. I hope you will subscribe to our channel. Um, we're on Facebook and Twitter. You can see us there. We have many, many instructional videos that go into a good bit more detail than I've managed to do with that. And we now need to think about what we're going to do for our next live stream. Perhaps anybody that's watching this can suggest to us what you would like to see in a live stream. Because, uh, well, if it's anything to do with showers, hopefully we can help you. So, thank you very much for watching and um, uh, check us out in our next live stream. Thank you.